Hi guys, welcome back to the Shannon Show podcast. Hello if you're new. So today's podcast is going to be a little discussion of the whole Patricia Bright, Molly May diabolical. I hope everybody is doing as well as can be and I really do hope everybody is being as proactive as possible in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and if you're still on the lookout for some resources I've linked some in the description. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts on my commentary. I'm always up for a chat, I'm always up for a debate and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you didn't give it a dislike. No hard feelings. So obviously Patricia Bright is trending on Twitter right now. I feel like every once in a while Patricia Bright decides she wants to tweet something and it gets the people talking, it gets the people talking and she keeps tweeting and I feel like she does this thing where maybe the first thing that she said wasn't that bad but then she just continues rambling on and making things worse for herself. Um, so yeah, but let's just talk about it. Starting off, I am a fan of Patricia Bright. She's kind of like one of the first black British women that I watched on YouTube. I grew up on her videos um, and Molly May. I'm a fan of Molly May as well. I loved her on Love Island. Um, so I'm a fan of both of these girls. I'm not really here to bash anybody, but I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk. But I'm gonna be honest. Let's give a little, so let's talk about the backstory. So the backstory is Molly May's giveaway. I'm sure lots of people have heard about it. I'm sure lots of people have entered it. I ain't gonna lie, I entered it, I did enter the giveaway. <laughs> did you enter the giveaway? Let me know if you entered the giveaway or not. Let me know if you're still following the pages. <laughs> um, so yeah, Molly, the gist of her Molly May's giveaway is that it was 8K worth of numerous goods, so designer goods, lots of Louis Vuitton products, lots of Louis Vuitton designer bags, suitcases, wallets and stuff. And also some Apple electronics as well. So I think some like AirPods and a, uh, the latest MacBook and some beauty treatments and some fake tan from her fake tan business. And it was a relatively easy giveaway. It was one of those retweet, follows, tag a friend, post on your story for extra, for an extra entry, you know, them ones. Um, it was a pretty easy standard giveaway and it, it has been trending. It has been trending. Um, everybody's basically been entering it. I mean, she already had 4 million followers and she's well known. So it wasn't really a surprise to me that her giveaway trended. Um, and then obviously the winner was announced yesterday and it was a black woman who won and that kind of also made it trend on Black Twitter as well. And um, that also kind of made a trend on Black Twitter as well. Um, I'm not gonna lie, as a black person, I was kind of just like, you know what? I didn't think I was gonna win. You know, you just enter, you know, see how it goes, you know, check when it's time. But, you know, I kind of just like, if I, I don't expect to win, but if I don't win, then it's cool. But it was nice to see a fellow black woman winning. I mean, with these giveaways, I kind of feel like it usually never is a black winner. So the fact that it was, it was just kind of like, well, this is nice. That's just kind of what I thought anyway. And I kind of feel like that's what the general consensus was on Black Twitter. Now, obviously Patricia tweeted her tweet, but I don't actually think that she was shading Molly May. And I will tell you why. Yesterday I saw a tweet. There was a tweet from somebody, a black man, who was basically praising Molly May's marketing and basically said that she was smart and now she's appealing to a black audience, well, a black female audience. But let me just find the tweet really quickly because I think this is what Patricia Bright was actually shading. So this is the tweet and the tweet and the person that I follow who kind of made light of this tweet is kind of involved within the kind of influence of black business women circle. So I think perhaps even she might have seen it from this circle. But the tweet is, and it doesn't really have that much um, retweets or likes, but I think perhaps maybe it could have found its way to Patricia's Bright's timeline because as I said, the person who brought it to my attention is kind of within that circle. But the tweet says, 
Molly May has seamlessly grabbed a hold of black women as part of her audience and has retained and grown that demographic over the months, growing their engagement to her posts, profile, as long as she's not problematic, she'll likely have them for the long haul. If I, and then it continues, this is the thread, if I was Molly May's manager, I'd get her to invest in a few black owned Instagram boutiques before Black History Month too. Surprised that they haven't done it yet after the Kylie Jenner moment. It's funny because I'm not sure if her team are aware and actively facing into this newly acquired demo just yet. They should subtly. So obviously, I think people are going to view this tweet in two ways. People are obviously are either going to agree with it. Some people are going to think he's chatting shit. And some people are going to say it's just kind of another black man sucking a white woman's ass for doing the bare minimum. Because this was just a giveaway. It wasn't a giveaway targeted to black people. It was a giveaway targeted to everyone. A black woman just happened to win this competition. Obviously, there's been some fuss with Fiat Punto Twitter. Some of it were, some people were accusing her choosing a black woman to win as a fix. And she has now come out to defend the choice of winner, which again is only going to create more positive media, perhaps more positive relationships with her and her black viewers or potential or and, and her black and her black fans. Yes, that is a point there. But I think this take is is a bit out there in my opinion. It's it's about is a bit out there. I'm a black woman. I follow Molly May. I followed her before the competition because I liked her on the show and I like her page. I follow her on YouTube and subscribe to her YouTube channel because I like her. I like her personality. Um, and I, I appreciate the way that she's managed to secure all of these bags. Um, so her now doing this giveaway and her picking a black person as a random winner wouldn't make me think, oh my God, she cares about black people. I'm now going to follow her because she's picked a random black woman to win her giveaway. I kind of feel like, do you think black women are stupid? Like we're that fickle. <laughs> And I just kind of think it's funny because I know a lot of people have unfollowed that tanning page. I mean, I unfollowed the tanning page and I even follow Molly May. But I unfollowed the tanning page because personally, I don't need to be following this tanning page. And I actually have used fake tan. Honestly, black girls, don't be sleeping on fake tan, you know. Don't be sleeping on fake tan, you know. It actually does wonders. It gives you that little summer glow. I would actually recommend. But I'm not going to be paying £28 for tan. So I didn't really need to be following her fake tan page so I followed it and I think a lot of people probably just are probably going to be unfollowing her whether it's her page or her tanning page so again I just kind of feel like you know black women aren't stupid we're not just gonna ride on any coach tail for me it was a reach this this whole statement it was a reach and it does kind of feel a bit suck RC. and again that could kind of feed into this narrative of white people being praised for doing something that black people are doing but getting praised more and I think that that is why Patricia Bright was kind of feeling a type of way not towards Molly May and her giveaway but towards this kind of hot take that is my theory uh, that is my theory and I think a lot of people might not be aware of this obviously this is just me guessing but I I believe that this is who she was actually shading initially. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Specifically on this hot take from this guy, um, what your interpretation of it was. And now that you know this information, could you see what Patricia was trying to say here and why she was potentially shading this guy? Because that's who I think she was actually shading and who she was shading and people who were perhaps tweeting like that. Because there was a lot of oh my god she's a marketing genius she's got black twitter on her side now kind of thing there was there was whispers of that there was so now that you know that information if you didn't know it before i'd be interested to hear now what do you think of the initial tweet but now let's talk about the tweets that came after so when i first saw that tweet i was kind of the benefit of the doubt kind of 
kind of thing. I was on the benefit of the doubt fence. But obviously her tweet was, damn, I had a competition to give 10,000 cash to black women last month. And now I'm wondering if it were designer items, would it have trended? So to me, obviously she's pointing out the 10K cash. She's pointing out the black woman. Obviously there was a black woman who won the competition. And now she's talking about trending because obviously now all of the black people, well, some black people are now talking about how Molly May is now this genius in black marketing. So this is, this is what I think this tweet is shading. But like I said, let me know what you think after processing all of this information. So then she goes on to tweet. My thoughts are that brand names are worth more than cash because they can be shown off more visibly and represent status that is until you need to pay the bills now this is when it starts to get into sticky waters now because this is now her not shading people who are now praising molly may as this genius in black marketing this now kind of seems like now she's shading molly may's giveaway and it's getting a bit more sticky here it's getting a bit more sticky, but let's talk about it. So, first off, not going to lie, this tweet kind of stinks. It kind of feels very condescending because this is to the black community. My assumptions, my assumption is, is that she is tweeting this out to black Twitter. So she's talking about paying bills and designer items. And it's been a talk in the community, but I just feel like this conversation is a bit toxic. But this whole kind of narrative of black people are interested in materialistic things and we don't know how to manage money properly and this is why we're broke. You know, I feel like it kind of feeds into that argument, but it's just kind of like, why are we talking about bills when it's just a giveaway, babe? Why are we talking about money and bills when it's just a giveaway? So it's kind of just like, of course, most people are going to prefer money to a Louis Vuitton bag. But if it's a Louis Vuitton bag competition, then I'm going to enter the Louis Vuitton bag competition. I'm going to enter every competition, whether it's money or a Louis Vuitton bag, I'm going to enter it all. I can see the point that she's trying to make, but it just kind of feels like condescending and a bit of read the room, like nobody cares, like nobody fucking cares because people wanted the Louis Vuitton, they wanted the MacBook, hell, I could use a MacBook right, new MacBook right now. I'm not really, you know, if there was 10K on offer, yes, I would enter the competition. So I don't know what your point is, is here now. If it was a kind of thing where it was, the competition was pick 10K or 15K worth of designer, then she could have a point. But the fact that there's no money option at all, it just kind of seems like there is a different point that you're making here now. And it's getting a bit condescending, in my opinion. So, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this particular tweet. Is she stating facts here? Is it a bit condescending? Was it a bit unnecessary? What are your thoughts? So... Then, obviously, people are now kind of accusing her of being a Tory because, I'm not going to lie, this tweet kind of does stink a bit of Tory. It stinks a bit of respectability politics. It stinks a bit of the materialistic narrative. And it's a lot of the things that these capitalists do when they're like, save, you know, £20 a day or whatever and be a millionaire or whatever. You know them tweets? <laughs> it's, it, it's stinking a bit of that. So I'm guessing people are calling her out saying that she's a capitalist and not a capitalist, a Tory, my, my apologies, a Tory. So she's now come out to defend herself and say that she's not a Tory and she's sick of the Tory rumours and the Tory lies and basically said that she's not a Tory, that she is left leaning. She tweeted out basically that she voted for Lib Dems and insinuated, she didn't actually say it explicitly, but I think she's insinuated insinuating that she did vote for Labour after they became anti-war. So I think perhaps in the last election she did vote Labour but she was just, it's, I don't know, she didn't say that she voted Labour but she was insinuating that she did and I don't know, I just think it's a bit fishy when people don't say who they voted for with their chest. Um, but take that as you will, I'll insert the, I'll insert the, the tweet. Um, 
But I gotta say, I got to say, I'm not gonna lie, I did kind of get a bit of Tory vibes from Patricia. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Because she does have a very money centered channel. She's always buying a ridiculous amount of clothes. She has a business channel um, and she's helping out people. She's giving people gems. But to me, she doesn't really give me venture capitalist vibes, but she says she's not a Tory, so she's not a Tory. Even if you're a socialist, we're living in a capitalist society. At the end of the day, if you want to thrive, you are going to have to make some money, regardless of what your affiliation, a political affiliation is. If you want to live a nice life, especially in the UK, you're going to need some money. So the fact that she is money driven doesn't surprise me. But for me, I haven't seen the material that would make me believe that she's a venture capitalist. But again, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I don't know where, what she's doing with her money. So I'm just going to leave it there. But I'm not going to lie, I did kind of get a bit of Tory vibes. But she says she's not a Tory, so I'm going to take her at her word. So I guess the next point is she's kind of just rambling on about her 10k giveaway. To be honest, she's just rambling on about it. So the point of the trending thing. So yeah, in terms of the trending thing, like I said, I don't actually think she actually meant like, oh my God, I gave away 10K, I should have been trending for it. I think she was actually shading that other guy. And I don't actually think she was saying, I'm giving away 10K, so therefore I should automatically be trending on black Twitter. I don't think that's what she was trying to say either. My point is, I do think she has been initially been taken out of context i think the second the second tweet was a bit fishy in my opinion um but i don't actually think she was actually coming for molly may and i don't actually think she was insinuating that because she gave 10k away she expected to be trending like i said i think this is just a counter to the people who were saying Mo molly may is now this marketing genius for black women i think that's what the initial point is but i'd be interested to hear from you guys now that you have all of this information, do you think maybe you might have taken Patricia's tweets out of context? Or do you feel like, nah, she was definitely shading Molly May. She should have read the room. She should have just kept it to herself. Um, what do you guys think? I think obviously life would just be easier if you have a following just to keep stuff to yourself unless your tweets are actually you're living because some people you know they get into dra drama because it helps out their channel it helps out it helps them make money um but i don't think she actually tweeted this out looking for drama looking for, to be the center of attention i don't think this is the case here um but i can see how it looks and i can see how this is being perceived um but i'd be interested to hear from you guys now after now after <laughs> this whole essay if we're taking my suspicions to be true that this is what she was actually commenting on i'd be interested to hear from you guys but yeah subscribe if you haven't yet and if you have don't forget to put my notification bell on so you know when the next video is dropping i'm also trying to get to 1.8 subscribers so i'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and help me reach that and thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far till next time guys bye